So uh, after this wonderful talk from uh, Kishore, um, uh, let me start off mine. Now, uh, first of all, I, I want to uh, really congratulate the, the organizers here. Uh, you know, it's a supply chain topic, right? Most, most of us are going to talk about visibility, transparency. And they chose Delhi and the winters of Delhi to have this conference. So I'm pretty sure there was a lot of planning which was going behind this. Um, so, you know, the last time, I think about a couple of weeks ago, there was another event that, that we were a part of. And one of my colleagues, uh, he was on this long flight from Jaipur to Delhi. He was traveling for the last five to six uh, hours. And on, for, he was on a Bharat Brahman trip. And I asked him, you know, where are you? Kya ho raha? He said that uh, I am facing the same problem that our client supply chain is facing, lack of visibility. I said, okay. I, I gave him the same response that the CEO and the sales heads of most of the companies give. I told him you should have planned better. And that's where the conversation ended. So uh, a quick, quick intro of, of myself. Uh, I am Yogesh, uh, partner with EY. Uh, I lead the supply chain practice there. And uh, I joined EY in 2007 when we were just starting off the supply chain practice, employee number one or two at that point of time. Uh, today we are a thousand member team in supply chain, uh, the biggest in the country when it comes to supply chain consulting. Uh, we have been doing these large scale supply chain transformation engagements. These are one year, two year, three year long engagements that we do, where we work with clients to build capabilities, to improve metrics, uh, build new processes, digitize, so on and so forth. We have done 100 plus such uh, you know, transformations in the country so far. So very strong bread and butter business. In 2018, we said that uh, while we know so much about supply chain, uh, why not have our own digital platform as well? Right, and that's where uh, what we now call as asterisk, the startup called asterisk within EY that was born. Uh, we have built this full end-to-end -end, uh, supply chain platform, uh, highly modular. As Kishore was saying, we are walking the talk there. Uh, made in India and exported to close to seven countries now. Uh, some of uh, the very large clients in CPG and automotive space are today running on asterisk. Uh, automotive space particularly close to 80% coverage of the auto OES universe where they are currently onboarded onto our platform doing collaborative planning with the OEMs. So that's, that's briefly about uh, uh, who am I and what I do. Today's topic Right, uh, now you know that I'm a consultant, right? And a consultant has to sell. And most of the consultants will want to sell AI, Gen AI, that's, that's the new bread and butter that is emerging. So then why this? Why, why am I talking about what is it that AI and Gen AI that can't do for your supply chains? So the first step of any sales cycle is to grab attention, to grab eyeballs. I hope I, I have done the first step right. I've got all of you interested. So, um, but on a more serious note, uh, if you look at the last decade or so, uh, and Salil, if you can go to the next one, over the last decade or so, uh, you know, couple of decades, in 2007 when we started working in supply chain, there were only two platforms. There used to be the SAP APO, there used to be Oracle Dmantra. Right, and that, that was about it. If you look at the market today, you've got Kinaxis, O9, Blue Yonder, so on and so forth. We've got new technologies coming in. We have, we have got AI, we've got Gen AI, we've got IoT, we've got optimizers, so on and so forth. But think about it. Have the supply chain capabilities also gone to a completely different level? Have the supply chain capabilities kept pace with this kind of advancements which are happening in the technology side. Right? Hand on heart, I know most of you will have a slightly different answer. They're of course not keeping pace. Right? And, and why is this happening? Right? That's a question that we should be, you know, answering. If we can go to the next one. Now, let me tell you a story. And after this, we can have a raise of hands in terms of how many people can relate to this. This is a typical day 
uh, in the life of a supply chain person. Right, you get a phone call from your sales team saying that, uh, you know, I've got something which is really urgent. Here is a customer waiting at the door. He needs this product. Can you please get it manufactured and sent urgently? Right? Now you have got the best of the best of the breed platforms, right? You've got optimizers, AI, so on and so forth. But but now because this phone call has come to you, now suddenly the entire organization gears up. We are India, right? We are not Western world. Right? We are a sales focused, right? We want business to grow at whatever cost. Right? So uh, everyone gets into action. Right? Whatever is the plan, that's okay. Leave it. I will produce what is required in the market. That is called agility. Right? I will get materials from my suppliers as quickly as possible. I'll get someone to go and stand in the factory of the supplier and get the material. I'll get urgent shipment downstream and get the material across to, uh, to wherever that is required. Right, that's typically how it works, isn't it? And then what happens at the end of the day? Many, many a times, this so-called urgent requirement where the customer is at the doorsteps, that customer suddenly vanishes. Or it vanishes from the person's mind who was asking for, for this, uh, this, this urgent shipment. And two months, three months down the line, suddenly the CEO realizes that, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, slow moving, obsolete inventory which has got built up. And now everyone starts getting into, into that mode of finding out why has this happened. The supply team comes and says that, you know, I, I produce because I was asked by the sales team to produce. Sales team comes and says that, um, did I really ask for it? I don't remember. Or better responses, I asked for it because in the last month when uh, I was asking for it, you didn't give me. Or you gave me, but it was too delayed. I missed the customer. Now, now think about it. All of these technologies that we are talking about, they cannot operate in this kind of environment. Right? They need certain kind of discipline. You cannot have a situation where someone is calling, you are changing your production, you are changing your dispatches, you are changing your procurement, your systems don't even know about it. But that is called agility in, in life. And that is where uh, a lot of failures in supply chain transformation start happening. Most of the clients that we have worked with, if you look at the typical journeys, you know, these are the typical three steps, as in there are more, but you start off by saying that I want to do gap analysis, I will do some kind of process definition, right? I will then start the implementation of this huge end-to-end -end platform that I have built, I have got from somewhere, best in class. And then at the end of it, as the platform starts going live, then I will start doing training, change management, so on and so forth. So, I, you know, I'm not here to preach you that you should do change management. That, that time is gone. That was a decade ago. Everyone knows that change management has to happen. Right? But the situation that you saw in terms of what is required, how your organization needs to be ready to get onto this new platform, to leverage all of these new technologies, that readiness of the organization you are talking about when? In the last stage of your transmission journey. It's a serial process. Define operating model, get digital, then start training, then start change management. Time and again, this has failed. In our view, this is the root cause of why people are unable to leverage or get benefits of all these new technologies or digital platforms that we have. Nothing wrong with the technologies. So what is it that one needs to do? We need to completely change this so-called uh, you know, process that we have got for transformation. How are we going to do it? We believe, and that's really what you know, the last two decades of experience has taught us, you cannot have a serial process. You need to have a process which is quite intermingled. And I'll explain that to you in, in the next couple of minutes. First of all, if I were to break up into two parts, 
part number one is first get your organization ready for the change right and this part also needs digital and I'll tell you how first of all as you can see on the screen first step remains the same define operating mo model you do gap analysis you define how my processes are going to work who is going to do what so on and so forth uh, you define the entire calendarization etc so now you've got everything laid out you know ideally how my supply chain should operate right but after that what ideally you need to do is don't just stop there because just defining the process is not going to help you because you want to avoid that situation that story that we just talked about so what you do don't wait for a big large transformation uh, or supply chain platform to come in deploy a very small lightweight simple integrated planning platform you know and Salil if you can click on the uh, the, the yellow box on the top a very simple thing we are saying all of your plans whether it is production whether it is demand whether it is procurement whether it is dispatch keep it at one place those excels that you have just upload it here no AI no ML no IOT no optimization I just need to know what is it that you are planning to produce I just need to know what is it that you are planning to sell right nothing new very simple very easy right sell it if you can go back but is it going to be enough right if I just put in a digital platform where all of these plans are going to be uploaded is it going to be enough will it change the story that we were talking about the answer is still no you need something more and that is where you have to go again out of your digital system the biggest lever to influence behaviors of people are KPIs you need to define KPIs how is your supply team going to be measured how is your demand team going to be sales team going to be measured procurement team going to be measured define those KPIs again nothing new I am not here to tell you that production plan I am not the first person to tell you that production plan adherence is a great KPI to measure your production people everyone knows about it but you also define that how that production plan adherence is going to be calculated you also need to define that the plan that is going to go there in that first tool that is the place from where I am going to pick up the plan and then I am going to calculate the production plan adherence now you also get your leadership team in in each and every SNOP the CEO of the organization they have to now start saying that I am going to measure you on the basis of this metric and this is how this metric is going to be calculated this is where the data is going to be picked up from right when we did this and we were doing it for one of the largest automotive companies in, in India this in itself was a year-long journey but it was a very large company things start changing what happens is the same situation when, when, when the production planner is telling your factory head that please go ahead and produce this because this is required in the market he starts saying that okay yes all good I will do that but can you please quickly make change in that production plan and I'll start producing production planner starts talking to the sales team and he says that okay I will make the changes in production plan can you please make a change in the forecast please because I am going to be measured on that if I produce something else which is not there in the plan my metric is hit this is the change which is a combination of leadership combination of metrics combination of simple tools which are going to enable you to get this visibility right uh, so simple you know we have talked about the integrated module simple metric calculation simple tools for doing metric calculation but touchless once you define that this is how metrics are going to be calculated no excels out of after that this is how the metric is calculated this is how it is coming in front of you right now let's go back with all of this happening now you have got a single version of truth in your organization if at all there is a plan it has to be here otherwise there is no plan if at all there is a metric which has to be calculated 
this is the tool where the metric is going to be seen. And the beauty of all of this is that you go live with something as simple as this within a couple of months. You start your new SNOP cycles, you start with this new, new uh, model of working, which is more data-based, which is more, more gov governance-oriented, right? And then the magic starts happening. After you establish the single version of truth, there are four really magical things that start happening. Number one, the benefits, they start coming in. You know, while we have got all kinds of technologies, but trust me, in all our uh, you know, engagements that we do, we have seen that 65% of the benefits start coming in just because you start getting visibility. Synchronization. You know, the basic tool, if it tells you that what you are producing today or what you are planning to produce today, that is not in sync with what the demand is or it is going to lead to extra inventories in the future. Very simple analytics. It will start influencing people to change their plans accordingly. Much in advance before you land up in those situations. Right? Uh, just go back. The second thing is the entire process adherence. This is a very important thing. You come out with a new operating plan, right? You, you come out with a new operating model. But how do you know whether this large organization that you have across sales team, across production team, across procurement team, are they doing their job on time or not? When you begin that transformation journey, measuring the adherence to this process, this new process, that in itself is a huge deal. Even before we can start talking about improvement in service levels, improvement in inventories. So you again institutionalize another small tool, right, which is going to measure the process adherence. You start getting, uh, and if you can click there, Salil, uh, on the process adherence part. You have mapped out the entire process in the tool. The tool itself is telling you who is not adhering to the process. Are there deviations from what you are what you're planning to do? So on and so forth this again starts getting reviewed in your SNOPs. Your CEO, your leadership starts reviewing these. So now in a very structured manner, you've got new way of running your supply chain measured through a small little digital tool and at the same time getting reviewed by the leadership. That makes a big difference, right? The last two things, the root cause analysis, now because everything is there in the system, you are able to figure out that why at all you are having loss of sales, right? How much of that, and the system itself will start telling you, how much of that is because of forecasting issues, production issues, sales issues, so on and so forth. So now you are at a stage where your organization is sort of ready to go on to the next stage, your behaviors have started changing. Everything has gone into the system and you know that where is the biggest benefit going to come from? Is it forecasting? Is it production? Is it dispatch planning? Is it replenishment? Is it procurement? Now your system is telling you that this is where you need to hit the hammer first. So you get a prioritized plan through each and every SNOP that you are running. In that itself, you get one prioritized plan saying that these are the things that you need to do first because 20% of your loss of sales is happening because of forecasting. That is when you are now ready for all of these new age technologies. Another interesting thing that happens is that this kind of simple working will start throwing up master data errors for you, which is again a very critical thing before you get into any new age technology. So you start putting another small tool which starts looking at master data error reports, right? And uh, Salil, if you can click there, where all kinds of different, you know, standard master data errors which are there in your SAP system, in your product master, so on and so forth, all of those start propping up. You create a cross-functional team to start working on master data. So now, if you, uh, if you can go back, just click on the next one. Just stay there. These are the two things that you have you have really enabled now. Point number one, 
you now have a very clear digital roadmap, a prioritized digital roadmap in terms of which interventions are going to give you the maximum value. At the same time, your organization is ready because you have started changing behaviors. Your leadership is aligned, your downstream team is aligned, everyone is looking at one set of metrics, one set of data. Now you can talk about, you know, AI, demand sensing, production scheduling, optimization, gen AI, so on and so forth. So if you now think about it, it's not a serial process. It's a layered process and far more modular process. Right? Your digital has to break up. It cannot be one single big block where you keep on implementing things for the next five, six months. Rather, you'll have to break it up and enable your change management journey through these small digital interventions. And yet, at the end of the day, maybe six months, eight months, or a year down the line, you will have one single end-to-end -end integrated system. And that really was the insight with which we had started Asterisk in 2018. What we have done is that, and if you can just go to the last slide now, Salil. Instead of having a typical supply chain platform where you get have, you have maybe three or four big modules, we have broken up our platform into 30 plus modules. Because we wanted to have this kind of a layered modular transformation journey where digital and change management coexist. I can ensure that the readiness of supply chain is there before I go for more advanced technologies and that really has been the, uh, the secret for our success. So those are the few thoughts that I wanted to leave with you uh, and that's where I'll want to end my, my session as well. Thank you.